The Victoria and Albert Museum, often abbreviated as the V&A, in London is the world's largest museum of applied and decorative arts and design, as well as sculpture, housing a permanent collection of over 2.27 million objects. It was founded in 1852 and named after Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. The V&A is located in the Brompton district of the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea, in an area that has become known as Albertopolis because of its association with Prince Albert, the Albert Memorial and the major cultural institutions with which he was associated. These include the Natural History Museum, the Science Museum, the Royal Albert Hall and Imperial College London. The museum is a non-departmental public body sponsored by the Department for Culture, Media and Sport. As with other national British museums, entrance is free. The V&A covers 12.5 acres, 5.1 hectares, and 145 galleries. Its collection spans 5,000 years of art, from ancient times to the present day, from the cultures of Europe, North America, Asia and North Africa. However, the art of antiquity in most areas is not collected. The holdings of ceramics, glass, textiles, costumes, silver, ironwork, jewelry, furniture, medieval objects, sculpture, prints and printmaking, drawings and photographs are among the largest and most comprehensive in the world. The museum owns the world's largest collection of post-classical sculpture, with the holdings of Italian Renaissance items being the largest outside Italy. The departments of Asia include art from South Asia, China, Japan, Korea and the Islamic world. The East Asian collections are among the best in Europe, with particular strengths in ceramics and metalwork, while the Islamic collection is amongst the largest in the Western world. Overall, it is one of the largest museums in the world. Since 2001 the museum has embarked on a major £150 million renovation program. New 17th and 18th century European galleries were opened on 9 December 2015. These restored the original Aston Webb interiors and host the European collections 1600-1815. The V&A Museum of Childhood in East London is a branch of the museum, and a new branch in London is being planned. Topic. History Topic. Foundation The Victoria and Albert Museum has its origins in the Great Exhibition of 1851, with which Henry Cole, the museum's first director, was involved in planning. Initially it was known as the Museum of Manufactures, first opening in May 1852 at Marlborough House, but by September had been transferred to Somerset House. At this stage the collections covered both applied art and science. Several of the exhibits from the exhibition were purchased to form the nucleus of the collection. By February 1854, discussions were underway to transfer the museum to the current site and it was renamed South Kensington Museum. In 1855, the German architect Gottfried Semper, at the request of Kohl, produced a design for the museum, but it was rejected by the Board of Trade as too expensive. The site was occupied by Brompton Park House, this was extended including the first refreshment rooms opened in 1857, the museum being the first in the world to provide such a facility, the official opening by Queen Victoria was on 20 June 1857. In the following year, late night openings were introduced, made possible by the use of gas lighting. This was to enable in the words of Cole, to ascertain practically what hours are most convenient to the working classes. This was linked to the use of the collections of both applied art and science as educational resources to help boost productive industry. In these early years the practical use of the collection was very much emphasized as opposed to that of high art at the National Gallery and Scholarship at the British Museum. George Wallace, 1811-1891, the first keeper of fine art collection, passionately promoted the idea of wide art education through the museum collections. This led to the transfer to the Museum of the School of Design that had been founded in 1837 at Somerset House. After the transfer, it was referred to as the Art School or Art Training School, later to become the Royal College of Art, which finally achieved full independence in 1949. From the 1860s to the 1880s, the scientific collections had been moved from the main museum site to various improvised galleries to the west of Exhibition Road. 
In 1893 the «Science Museum» had effectively come into existence when a separate director was appointed, the laying of the foundation stone of the Aston Webb building, to the left of the main entrance, on 17 May 1899 was the last official public appearance by Queen Victoria. It was during this ceremony that the change of name from the South Kensington Museum to the Victoria and Albert Museum was made public. Queen Victoria's address during the ceremony, as recorded in the London Gazette, ended, I trust that it will remain for ages a monument of discerning liberality and a source of refinement and progress. The exhibition which the museum organised to celebrate the centennial of the 1899 renaming, A Grand Design, first toured in North America from 1997, Baltimore Museum of Art, Museum of Fine Arts, Boston, Royal Ontario Museum, Toronto, Museum of Fine Arts, Houston and the Fine Arts Museums of San Francisco, returning to London in 1999. To accompany and support the exhibition, the museum published a book, Grand Design, which it has made available for reading online on its website. Topic nineteen hundred to nineteen fifty. The opening ceremony for the Aston Webb Building by King Edward VII and Queen Alexandra took place on the twenty sixth of June, nineteen o nine. In nineteen fourteen, the construction commenced of the Science Museum, signalling the final split of the science and art collections. In nineteen thirty nine, on the outbreak of World War II, most of the collection was sent to a quarry in Wiltshire, to Montacute House in Somerset, or to a tunnel near Aldwych Tube Station, with larger items remaining in situ, sand bagged and bricked in. Between 1941 and 1944 some galleries were used as a school for children evacuated from Gibraltar. The South Court became a canteen, first for the Royal Air Force and later for bomb damage repair squads. Before the return of the collections after the war, the Britain Can Make It exhibition was held between September and November 1946, attracting nearly a million and a half visitors. This was organised by the Council of Industrial Design established by the British government in 1944, to promote by all practicable means the improvement of design in the products of British industry. The success of this exhibition led to the planning of the Festival of Britain, 1951. By 1948 most of the collections had been returned to the museum. Topic Since 1950 In July 1973, as part of its outreach programme to young people, the V&A became the first museum in Britain to present a rock concert. The V&A presented a combined concert, lecture by British progressive folk rock band Griffin, who explored the lineage of medieval music and instrumentation and related how those contributed to contemporary music 500 years later. This innovative approach to bringing young people to museums was a hallmark of the directorship of Roy Strong and was subsequently emulated by some other British museums. In the 1980s, Sir Roy Strong renamed the museum as the Victoria and Albert Museum, the National Museum of Art and Design. Strong's successor Elizabeth Esteve Coll oversaw a turbulent period for the institution in which the museum's curatorial departments were restructured, leading to public criticism from some staff. Esteve Cole's attempts to make the V&A more accessible included a criticized marketing campaign emphasizing the café over the collection. Since 2001 the museum has embarked on a major £150 million renovation program. In 2001, Futureplan, was launched, which involves redesigning all the galleries and public facilities in the museum that have yet to be remodeled. This is to ensure that the exhibits are better displayed, more information is available and the museum meets modern expectations for museum facilities, it should take about 10 years to complete the work. A new entrance, courtyard and gallery designed by Amanda Levitz Allais was scheduled for opening in 2017. The museum also runs the Museum of Childhood at Bethnal Green and used to run the Theatre Museum in Covent Garden and Apsley House. The Theatre Museum is now closed and the V&A Theatre collections are now displayed within the South Kensington building. In March 2018, it was announced that the Duchess of Cambridge would become the first royal patron of the museum. Topic partnerships The V&A has no museums or galleries of its own outside London. 
Instead it works with a small number of partner organizations in Sheffield, Dundee and Blackpool to provide a regional presence. V&A Dundee opened on the 15th of September 2018. The V&A was in discussion with the University of Dundee, University of Abertay, Dundee City Council and the Scottish Government with a view to opening a new £43 million gallery in Dundee that would use the V&A brand although it would be funded through and operated independently. As of 2015, with costs estimated at £76 million, it is the most expensive gallery project ever undertaken in Scotland. The V&A Dundee will be on the city's waterfront and is intended to focus on fashion, architecture, product design, graphic arts and photography. It is scheduled to open on 15 September 2018. Dundee City Council was expected to pay a major part of the running costs. The V&A was not contributing financially, but would be providing expertise, loans and exhibitions. Plans for a new gallery in Blackpool are also under consideration. This follows earlier plans to move the theatre collection to a new £60 million museum in Blackpool, which failed due to lack of funding. The V&A exhibits twice a year at the Millennium Galleries in partnership with Museums Sheffield. The V&A is one of 17 museums across Europe and the Mediterranean participating in a project called Discover Islamic Art. Developed by the Brussels-based Consortium Museum with No Frontiers, this online, virtual museum, brings together more than 1,200 works of Islamic art and architecture into a single database. The museum is a non-departmental public body sponsored by the Department for Culture, Media and Sport. As with other national British museums, entrance is free. Topic architecture of the museum Victorian parts of the building have a complex history, with piecemeal additions by different architects. Founded in May 1852, it was not until 1857 that the museum moved to its present site. This area of London was known as Brompton but had been renamed South Kensington. The land was occupied by Brompton Park House, which was extended, most notably by the Brompton Boilers, which were starkly utilitarian iron galleries with a temporary look and were later dismantled and used to build the V&A Museum of Childhood. The first building to be erected that still forms part of the museum was the Sheepshanks Gallery in 1857 on the eastern side of the garden. Its architect was civil engineer Captain Francis Folk, Royal Engineers, who was appointed by Cole. The next major expansions were designed by the same architect, the Turner and Vernon Galleries built in 1858-1859 to house the eponymous collections, later transferred to the Tate Gallery, and now used as the Picture Galleries and Tapestry Gallery respectively. The North and South Courts were then built, both of which opened by June 1862. They now form the galleries for temporary exhibitions and are directly behind the Sheepshanks Gallery. On the very northern edge of the site is situated the Secretariat Wing, also built in 1862. This houses the offices and boardroom etc. and is not open to the public. An ambitious scheme of decoration was developed for these new areas, a series of mosaic figures depicting famous European artists of the medieval and Renaissance period. These have now been removed to other areas of the museum. Also started were a series of frescoes by Lord Leighton, industrial arts as applied to war 1878-1880 and industrial arts applied to peace, which was started but never finished. To the east of this were additional galleries, the decoration of which was the work of another designer Owen Jones. These were the Oriental Courts, covering India, China and Japan, completed in 1863. None of this decoration survives, part of these galleries became the new galleries covering the 19th century, opened in December 2006. The last work by Folk was the design for the range of buildings on the north and west sides of the garden. This includes the refreshment rooms, reinstated as the Museum Café in 2006, with the Silver Gallery above, at the time the Ceramics Gallery, the top floor has a splendid lecture theatre, although this is seldom open to the general public. The ceramic staircase in the northwest corner of this range of buildings was designed by F. W. Moody and has architectural details of molded and colored pottery. All the work on the north range was designed and built in 1864-1869. The style adopted for this part of the museum was Italian Renaissance, much use was made of terracotta, brick and mosaic. 
This north façade was intended as the main entrance to the museum, with its bronze doors, designed by James Gamble and Reuben Townrow, having six panels, depicting Humphrey Davy, chemistry, Isaac Newton, astronomy, James Watt, mechanics, Bramante, architecture, Michelangelo, sculpture, and Titian, painting, the panels thus represent the range of the museum's collections. Godfrey Sykes also designed the terracotta embellishments and the mosaic in the pediment of the north façade commemorating the Great Exhibition, the profits from which helped to fund the museum. This is flanked by terracotta statue groups by Percival Ball. This building replaced Brompton Park House, which could then be demolished to make way for the South Range. The interiors of the three refreshment rooms were assigned to different designers. The Green Dining Room, 1866-68, was the work of Philip Webb and William Morris, and displays Elizabethan influences. The lower part of the walls are panelled in wood with a band of paintings depicting fruit and the occasional figure, with moulded plaster foliage on the main part of the wall and a plaster frieze around the decorated ceiling and stained glass windows by Edward Byrne Jones. The center refreshment room, 1865-77, was designed in a Renaissance style by James Gamble. The walls and even the ionic columns in this room are covered in decorative and molded ceramic tile. The ceiling consists of elaborate designs on enameled metal sheets and matching stained glass windows, and the marble fireplace was designed and sculpted by Alfred Stevens and was removed from Dorchester House prior to that building's demolition in 1929. The Grill Room, 1876-81, was designed by Sir Edward Poynter. The lower part of its walls consist of blue and white tiles with various figures and foliage enclosed by wood paneling, while above there are large tiled scenes with figures depicting the Four Seasons and the Twelve Months, painted by ladies from the art school then based in the museum. The windows are also stained glass, there is an elaborate cast iron grill still in place. With the death of Captain Francis Folk of the Royal Engineers, the next architect to work at the museum was Colonel, later Major General, Henry Young Darricott Scott, also of the Royal Engineers. He designed to the northwest of the garden the five-story school for naval architects, also known as the Science Schools, now the Henry Cole Wing, in 1867-1872. Scott's assistant J.W. Wilde designed the impressive staircase that rises the full height of the building. Made from KB stone, the steps are 7 feet 2.1 meters in length, while the balustrades and columns are Portland stone. It is now used to jointly house the prints and architectural drawings of the V&A prints, drawings, paintings and photographs, and Royal Institute of British Architects, Reba Drawings and Archives Collections, and the Sackler Center for Arts Education, which opened in 2008. Continuing the style of the earlier buildings, various designers were responsible for the decoration. The terracotta embellishments were again the work of Godfrey Sykes, although graffito was used to decorate the east side of the building designed by F. W. Moody. A final embellishment was the wrought iron gates made as late as 1885 designed by Starkey Gardner. These lead to a passage through the building. Scott also designed the two cast courts, 1870-73, to the southeast of the garden, the site of the Brompton Boilers. These vast spaces have ceilings 70 feet 21 meters, in height to accommodate the plaster casts of parts of famous buildings, including Trajan's Column, in two separate pieces. The final part of the museum designed by Scott was the art library and what is now the sculpture gallery on the south side of the garden, built in 1877-1883. The exterior mosaic panels in the parapet were designed by Reuben Townrow, who also designed the plaster work in the library. Sir John Taylor designed the bookshelves and cases. This was the first part of the museum to have electric lighting. This completed the northern half of the site, creating a quadrangle with the garden at its center, but left the museum without a proper facade. In 1890 the government launched a competition to design new buildings for the museum, with architect Alfred Waterhouse as one of the judges, this would give the museum a new imposing front entrance. Topic. Edwardian period The main façade, built from red brick and Portland stone, stretches 720 feet 220 meters along Cromwell Gardens and was designed by Aston Webb after winning a competition in 1891 to extend the museum. Construction took place between 1899 and 1909. 
Stylistically it is a strange hybrid, although much of the detail belongs to the Renaissance, there are medieval influences at work. The main entrance, consisting of a series of shallow arches supported by slender columns and niches with twin doors separated by pier, is Romanesque in form but classical in detail. Likewise the tower above the main entrance has an open work crown surmounted by a statue of fame, a feature of late Gothic architecture and a feature common in Scotland, but the detail is classical. The main windows to the galleries are also mullioned and transomed, again a Gothic feature, the top row of windows are interspersed with statues of many of the British artists whose work is displayed in the museum. Prince Albert appears within the main arch above the twin entrances, and Queen Victoria above the frame around the arches and entrance, sculpted by Alfred Drury. These facades surround four levels of galleries. Other areas designed by Webb include the entrance hall and rotunda, the east and west halls, the areas occupied by the shop and Asian galleries, and the costume gallery. The interior makes much use of marble in the entrance hall and flanking staircases, although the galleries as originally designed were white with restrained classical detail and mouldings, very much in contrast to the elaborate decoration of the Victorian galleries, although much of this decoration was removed in the early 20th century. Topic. Post war period The museum survived the Second World War with only minor bomb damage. The worst loss was the Victorian stained glass on the ceramic staircase, which was blown in when bombs fell nearby. Pock marks still visible on the facade of the museum were caused by fragments from the bombs. In the immediate post war years, there was little money available for other than essential repairs. The 1950s and early 1960s saw little in the way of building work. The first major work was the creation of new storage space for books in the Art Library in 1966 and 1967. This involved flooring over Aston Webb's main hall to form the bookstacks, with a new medieval gallery on the ground floor, now the shop, opened in 2006. Then the lower ground floor galleries in the southwest part of the museum were redesigned, opening in 1978 to form the new galleries covering continental art 1600-1800, late Renaissance, Baroque through Rococo and Neoclassical. In 1974 the museum had acquired what is now the Henry Cole Wing from the Royal College of Science. To adapt the building as galleries, all the Victorian interiors except for the staircase were recast during the remodeling. To link this to the rest of the museum, a new entrance building was constructed on the site of the former boiler house, the intended site of the spiral, between 1978 and 1982. This building is of concrete and very functional, the only embellishment being the iron gates by Christopher Hay and Douglas Coyne of the Royal College of Art. These are set in the columned screen wall designed by Aston Webb that forms the facade. Topic Recent years A few galleries were redesigned in the 1990s including the Indian, Japanese, Chinese, Ironwork, the main glass galleries, and the main silverware gallery, which was further enhanced in 2002 when some of the Victorian decoration was recreated. This included two of the ten columns having the ceramic decoration replaced and the elaborate painted designs restored on the ceiling. As part of the 2006 renovation the mosaic floors in the sculpture gallery were restored, most of the Victorian floors were covered in linoleum after the Second World War. After the success of the British galleries, opened in 2001, it was decided to embark on a major redesign of all the galleries in the museum, this is known as Futureplan, and was created in consultation with the exhibition designers and masterplanners metaphor. The plan is expected to take about 10 years and was started in 2002. To date several galleries have been redesigned, notably, in 2002, the main silver gallery, contemporary, in 2003, photography, the main entrance, the painting galleries, in 2004, the tunnel to the subway leading to South Kensington Tube Station, new signage throughout the museum, architecture, V&A and Reba reading rooms and stores, metalware, members room, contemporary glass, and the Gilbert Bay's sculpture gallery, in 2005, portrait miniatures, prints and drawings, displays in room 117, the garden, sacred silver and stained glass, in 2006, central hall shop, Islamic Middle East, the new cafe, and sculpture galleries. Several designers and architects have been involved in this work. 
Eva Jirichnor designed the enhancements to the main entrance and rotunda, the new shop, the tunnel and the sculpture galleries. Gareth Hoskins was responsible for contemporary and architecture, Softrum, Islamic Middle East and the members' room, McInnes Usher McKnight Architects, Numa, were responsible for the new café and designed the new medieval and renaissance galleries which opened in 2009. In September 2004, the museum's board of trustees voted to abandon a proposed extension, designed by Daniel Libeskind with Cecil Barmond, after failing to receive funding from the Heritage Lottery Fund. In 2011 the V&A announced that London London-based practice Alle had won an international competition to construct a gallery beneath a new entrance courtyard on Exhibition Road. Planning for the scheme was granted in 2012. Topic Garden The Central Garden was redesigned by Kim Wilkie and opened as the John Medeski Garden on 5 July 2005. The design is a subtle blend of the traditional and modern, the layout is formal, there is an elliptical water feature lined in stone with steps around the edge which may be drained to use the area for receptions, gatherings or exhibition purposes. This is in front of the bronze doors leading to the refreshment rooms. A central path flanked by lawns leads to the sculpture gallery. The north, east and west sides have herbaceous borders along the museum walls with paths in front which continues along the south facade. In the two corners by the north facade there is planted an American sweet gum tree. The southern, eastern and western edges of the lawns have glass planters which contain orange and lemon trees in summer, which are replaced by bay trees in winter. At night both the planters and water feature may be illuminated, and the surrounding facades lit to reveal details normally in shadow. Especially noticeable are the mosaics in the lodger of the north facade. In summer a cafe is set up in the southwest corner. The garden is also used for temporary exhibits of sculpture, for example, a sculpture by Jeff Koons was shown in 2006. It has also played host to the museum's annual contemporary design showcase, the V&A Village Fate, since 2005. Topic collections The collecting areas of the museum are not easy to summarize, having evolved partly through attempts to avoid too much overlap with other national museums in London. Generally, the classical world of the West and the ancient Near East is left to the British Museum, and Western paintings to the National Gallery, though there are all sorts of exceptions, for example painted portrait miniatures, where the V&A has the main national collection. The Victoria and Albert Museum is split into four collections departments, 1, Asia, 2, Furniture, Textiles and Fashion, 3, Sculpture, Metalwork, Ceramics and Glass, and, 4, Word and Image. The museum curators care for the objects in the collection and provide access to objects that are not currently on display to the public and scholars. The collection departments are further divided into 16 display areas, whose combined collection numbers over 6.5 million objects, not all items are displayed or stored at the V&A. There is a repository at Blythe House, West Kensington, as well as annex institutions managed by the V&A, also the museum lends exhibits to other institutions. The following lists each of the collections on display and the number of objects within the collection. The museum has 145 galleries, but given the vast extent of the collections only a small percentage is ever on display. Many acquisitions have been made possible only with the assistance of the National Art Collections Fund. Topic architecture In 2004, the V&A alongside Royal Institute of British Architects opened the first permanent gallery in the UK covering the history of architecture with displays using models, photographs, elements from buildings and original drawings. With the opening of the new gallery, the Reba Drawings and Archives collection has been transferred to the museum, joining the already extensive collection held by the V&A. With over 600,000 drawings, over 750,000 papers and paraphernalia, and over 700,000 photographs from around the world, together they form the world's most comprehensive architectural resource. Not only are all the major British architects of the last 400 years represented, but many European especially Italian, and American architects' drawings are held in the collection. The RIBA's holdings of over 330 drawings by Andrea Palladio are the largest in the world. Other Europeans well represented are Jacques Gentilhatra and Antonio Vicentini. 
British architects whose drawings, and in some cases models of their buildings, in the collection, include, Inigo Jones, Sir Christopher Wren, Sir John Vanbrugh, Nicholas Hawksmoor, William Kent, James Gibbs, Robert Adam, Sir William Chambers, James Wyatt, Henry Holland, John Nash, Sir John Soane, Sir Charles Barry, Charles Robert Cockerell, Augustus Welby Northmore Pugin, Sir George Gilbert Scott, John Loughborough Pearson, George Edmund Street, Richard Norman Shaw, Alfred Waterhouse, Sir Edwin Lutyens, Charles Rennie Mac Macintosh, Charles Holden, Frank Hoare, Lord Richard Rogers, Lord Norman Foster, Sir Nicholas Grimshaw, Zaha Hadid and Alec Horsnell. As well as period rooms, the collection includes parts of buildings, for example the two top stories of the façade of Sir Paul Pinder's house dated C1600 from Bishopsgate with elaborately carved woodwork and leaded windows, a rare survivor of the Great Fire of London, there is a brick portal from a London house of the English Restoration period and a fireplace from the Gallery of Northumberland House. European examples include a dormer window dated 1523-1535 from the Chateau of Montel. There are several examples from Italian Renaissance buildings including, portals, fireplaces, balconies and a stone buffet that used to have a built-in fountain. The main architecture gallery has a series of pillars from various buildings and different periods, for example a column from the Alhambra. Examples covering Asia are in those galleries concerned with those countries, as well as models and photographs in the main architecture gallery. Topic Asia The Viennese collection of art from Asia numbers more than 160,000 objects, one of the largest in existence. It has one of the world's most comprehensive and important collections of Chinese art whilst the collection of South Asian art is the most important in the West. The museum's coverage includes items from South and Southeast Asia, Himalayan kingdoms, China, the Far East and the Islamic world. Topic Islamic art The V&A holds over 19,000 items from the Islamic world, ranging from the early Islamic period, the 7th century, to the early 20th century. The Jamil Gallery of Islamic Art, opened in 2006, houses a representative display of 400 objects with the highlight being the Ardable Carpet, the centerpiece of the gallery. The displays in this gallery cover objects from Spain, North Africa, the Middle East, Central Asia and Afghanistan. A masterpiece of Islamic art is a 10th-century rock crystal ewer. Many examples of Qurans with exquisite calligraphy dating from various periods are on display. A 15th-century minbar from a Cairo mosque with ivory forming complex geometrical patterns inlaid in wood is one of the larger objects on display. Extensive examples of ceramics especially Iznik pottery, glasswork including 14th-century lamps from mosques and metalwork are on display. The collection of Middle Eastern and Persian rugs and carpets is amongst the finest in the world, many were part of the salting bequest of 1909. Examples of tile work from various buildings including a fireplace dated 1731 from Istanbul made of intricately decorated blue and white tiles and turquoise tiles from the exterior of buildings from Samarkand are also displayed. Topic South Asia The museum's collections of South and Southeast Asian art are the most comprehensive and important in the West comprising nearly 60,000 objects, including about 10,000 textiles and 6,000 paintings. The range of the collection is immense. The Jawaharlal Nehru Gallery of Indian Art, opened in 1991, contains art from about 500 BC to the 19th century. There is an extensive collection of sculpture, mainly of a religious nature, Hindu, Buddhist and Jain. The gallery is richly endowed with art of the Mughal Empire and the Marathas, including fine portraits of the emperors and other paintings and drawings, jade wine cups and gold spoons inset with emeralds, diamonds and rubies, also from this period are parts of buildings such as Ajali and pillars. India was a large producer of textiles, from dyed cotton chintz, muslin to rich embroidery work using gold and silver thread, colored sequins and beads is displayed, as are carpets from Agra and Lahore. Examples of clothing are also displayed. In 1879-80 the collections of the British East India Company's India Museum were given to the V&A and the British Museum. Most of the items were plundered during the Indian Rebellion of 1857 by the British forces and taken from India. Some of the examples are Tipu's Tiger, an automaton and mechanical organ made in Mysore around 1795. It represents a tiger mauling a soldier or officer of the British East India Company. 
It is named after the ruler of Mysore who commissioned it, Tipu Sultan. The wine cup of Shah Jahan was an item that was plundered during the Indian Rebellion of 1857 and the fall of the Mughal Empire to the invading British forces. It was originally a Mughal property and kept at the Red Fort in Delhi. So far there have been no moves by the museum to catalogue and restitute all the stolen items back to India. Topic East Asia The Far Eastern collections include more than 70,000 works of art from the countries of East Asia, China, Japan and Korea. The TT Choi Gallery of Chinese Art opened in 1991, displaying a representative collection of the V&A's approximately 16,000 objects from China, dating from the 4th millennium BC to the present day. Though the majority of art works on display date from the Ming and Qing dynasties, there are exquisite examples of objects dating from the Tang dynasty and earlier periods. Notably, a meter-high bronze head of the Buddha dated to c. 750 AD and one of the oldest items a 2,000-year-old jade horse head from a burial. Other sculptures include life-size tomb guardians. Classic examples of Chinese manufacturing are displayed that include lacquer, silk, porcelain, jade and cloisonné enamel. Two large ancestor portraits of a husband and wife painted in watercolor on silk date from the 18th century. There is a unique Chinese lacquerware table, made in the imperial workshops during the reign of the Xuande Emperor in the Ming Dynasty. Examples of clothing are also displayed. One of the largest objects is a bed from the mid-17th century. The work of contemporary Chinese designers is also displayed. The Toshiba Gallery of Japanese Art opened in December 1986. The majority of exhibits date from 1550 to 1900, but one of the oldest pieces displayed is the 13th century sculpture of Amida Nyorai. Examples of classic Japanese armor from the mid 19th century, steel sword blades, katana, inro, lacquerware, including the Mazarin chest dated C1640, is one of the finest surviving pieces from Kyoto, porcelain, including Imari, Netsuki, woodblock prints, including the work of Ando Hiroshiga, graphic works, include printed books, as well as a few paintings, scrolls and screens, textiles and dress, including kimonos, are some of the objects on display. One of the finest objects displayed is Suzuki Chokichi's bronze incense burner, Koro, dated 1875, standing at over 2.25 meters high and 1.25 meters in diameter it is also one of the largest examples made. The museum also holds some Clazane pieces from the Japanese art production company, Ando Clazane. The smaller galleries cover Korea, the Himalayan kingdoms and Southeast Asia. Korean displays include green glazed ceramics, silk embroideries from officials' robes and gleaming boxes inlaid with mother of pearl made between 500 AD and 2000. Himalayan items include important early Nepalese bronze sculptures, repoussé work and embroidery. Tibetan art from the 14th to the 19th century is represented by notable 14th and 15th century religious images in wood and bronze, scroll paintings and ritual objects. Art from Thailand, Burma, Cambodia, Indonesia and Sri Lanka in gold, silver, bronze, stone, terracotta and ivory represents these rich and complex cultures. The displays span the 6th to 19th centuries. Refined Hindu and Buddhist sculptures reflect the influence of India. Items on show include beetle nut cutters, ivory combs and bronze palanquin hooks. Topic: Books. The museum houses the National Art Library, a public library containing over 750,000 books, photographs, drawings, paintings, and prints. It is one of the world's largest libraries dedicated to the study of fine and decorative arts. The library covers all areas and periods of the museum's collections with special collections covering illuminated manuscripts, rare books and artists' letters and archives. The library consists of three large public rooms, with around a hundred individual study desks. These are the West Room, Center Room and Reading Room. The Center Room contains, special collection material. One of the great treasures in the library is the Codex Forster, some of Leonardo da Vinci's notebooks. The Codex consists of three parchment-bound manuscripts, Forster I, Forster II, and Forster III, quite small in size, dated between 1490 and 1505. 
Their contents include a large collection of sketches and references to the equestrian sculpture commissioned by the Duke of Milan Ludovico Sforza to commemorate his father Francesco Sforza. These were bequeathed with over 18,000 books to the museum in 1876 by John Forster. The Reverend Alexander Dice was another benefactor of the library, leaving over 14,000 books to the museum in 1869. Amongst the books he collected are early editions in Greek and Latin of the poets and playwrights Aeschylus, Aristotle, Homer, Livy, Ovid, Pindar, Sophocles and Virgil. More recent authors include Giovanni Boccaccio, Dante, Racine, Rabelais and Molière. Writers whose papers are in the library are as diverse as Charles Dickens and Beatrix Potter. Illuminated manuscripts in the library dating from the 12th to 16th centuries include, the Eadwine Psalter, Canterbury, Pocket Book of Hours, Reims, Missal from the Royal Abbey of St. Denis, Paris, the Simon Marmion Book of Hours, Bruges, 1524 Charter illuminated by Lucas Horenbout, London, the Armagnac Manuscript of the Trial and Rehabilitation of Joan of Arc, Rouen, also the Victorian period is represented by William Morris. The National Art Library also called Word and Image Department at the Victoria and Albert Museum Collection Catalogue used to be kept in different formats including printed exhibit catalogues, and card catalogues. A computer system called Modes Cataloging System was used from the 1980s to the 1990s, but those electronic files were not available to the library users. All of the archival material at the National Art Library is using Encoded Archival Description EAD. The Victoria and Albert Museum has a computer system but most of the items in the collection, unless those were newly accessioned into the collection, probably do not show up in the computer system. There is a feature on the Victoria and Albert Museum website called, Search the Collections, but not everything is listed there. The National Art Library also includes a collection of comics and comic art. Notable parts of the collection include the Crazy Cat Archive, comprising 4,200 comics, and the Rakoff Collection, comprising 17,000 items collected by writer and editor Ian Rakoff. The Victoria and Albert Museum's word and image department was under the same pressure being felt in archives around the world, to digitize their collection. A large-scale digitization project began in 2007 in that department. That project was entitled The Factory Project to reference Andy Warhol and to create a factory to completely digitize the collection. The first step of the factory project was to take photographs using digital cameras. The word and image department had a collection of old photos but they were in black and white and in variant conditions, so new photos were shot. Those new photographs will be accessible to researchers to the Victoria and Albert Museum website. 15,000 images were taken during the first year of the factory project, including drawings, watercolors, computer-generated art, photographs, posters, and woodcuts. The second step of the factory project is to catalog everything. The third step of the factory project is to audit the collection. All of those items which were photographed and catalogued, must be audited to make sure everything listed as being in the collection was physically found during the creation of the factory project. The fourth goal of the factory project is conservation, which means performing some basic preventable procedures to those items in the department. There is a, search the collections, feature on the Victoria and Albert website. The main impetus behind the large-scale digitization project called the Factory Project was to list more items in the collections in those computer databases. Topic British Galleries These 15 galleries, which opened in November 2001, contain around 4,000 items. The displays in these galleries are based around three major themes, style, who led taste, and what was new. The period covered is 1500 to 1900, with the galleries divided into three major subdivisions, Tudor and Stuart Britain, 1500 to 1714, covering the Renaissance, Elizabethan, Jacobean, Restoration and Baroque styles Georgian Britain, 1714 to 1837, covering Palladianism, Rococo, Chinoiserie, Neoclassicism, the Regency, the influence of Chinese, Indian and Egyptian styles, and the early Gothic Revival Victorian Britain, 1837 
1907 to 1901, covering the later phases of the Gothic Revival, French influences, classical and Renaissance revivals, aestheticism, Japanese style, the continuing influence of China, India, and the Islamic world, the arts and crafts movement and the Scottish school, not only the work of British artists and craftspeople is on display, but also work produced by European artists that was purchased or commissioned by British patrons, as well as imports from Asia, including porcelain, cloth and wallpaper. Designers and artists whose work is on display in the galleries include Gian Lorenzo Benini, Grinling Gibbons, Daniel Marrow, Louis Laguerre, Antonio Verrio, Sir James Thornhill, William Kent, Robert Adam, Josiah Wedgwood, Matthew Bolton, Canova, Thomas Chippendale, Pugin, William Morris. Patrons who have influenced taste are also represented by works of art from their collections, these include, Horace Walpole, a major influence on the Gothic Revival, William Thomas Beckford and Thomas Hope. The galleries showcase a number of complete and partial reconstructions of period rooms, from demolished buildings, including, the parlour from 2 Henrietta Street, London, dated 1727-1728, designed by James Gibbs the Norfolk House Music Room, St. James Square, London, dated 1756, designed by Matthew Brettingham and Giovanni Battista Borra A section of a wall from the glass drawing room of Northumberland House, dated 1773-1775, designed by Robert Adamson of the more notable works displayed in the galleries include, Pietro Torrigiani's colored terracotta bust of Henry VII, dated 1509-1511 Henry VIII's writing desk, dated 1525, made from walnut and oak, lined with leather and painted and gilded with the king's coat of arms a spinet dated 1570-1580, made for Elizabeth I the Great Bed of Ware, dated 1590-1600, a large, elaborately carved four-poster bed with marquetry headboard Gian Lorenzo Benini's bust of Thomas Baker, from the 1630s 17th century tapestries from the Sheldon and Mortlake workshops The Wood Relief of the Stoning of St. Stephen, dated C1670, by Grinling Gibbons The Macclesfield Wine Set, dated 1719-1720, made by Anthony Nelm, the only complete set known to survive. The life-size sculpture of George Frederick Hundle, dated 1738, by Louis-François Roubiliac Furniture by Thomas Chippendale and Robert Adam The Sculpture of Bashaw, dated 1831-1834, by Matthew Coates Wyatt Aesthetic and Arts and Crafts Furniture by Edward William Godwin and Charles Rennie Mackintosh, and Carpets and Interior Textiles by William Morris, the galleries also link design to wider trends in British culture. For instance, design in the Tudor period was influenced by the spread of printed books and the work of European artists and craftsmen employed in Britain. In the Stuart period, increasing trade, especially with Asia, enabled wider access to luxuries like carpets, lacquered furniture, silks and porcelain. In the Georgian age there was increasing emphasis on entertainment and leisure. For example, the increase in tea drinking led to the production of tea paraphernalia such as china and caddies. European styles seen on the Grand Tour also influenced taste. As the Industrial Revolution took hold, the growth of mass production produced entrepreneurs such as Josiah Wedgwood, Matthew Bolton and Eleanor Code. In the Victorian era new technology and machinery had a significant effect on manufacturing, and for the first time since the Reformation, the Anglican and Roman Catholic churches had a major effect on art and design such as the Gothic Revival. There is a large display on the Great Exhibition which, among other things, led to the founding of the V&A. In the later 19th century, the increasing backlash against industrialization, led by John Ruskin, contributed to the arts and crafts movement. Topic. Cast courts One of the most dramatic parts of the museum is the cast courts in the sculpture wing, comprising two large, skylighted rooms two stories high housing hundreds of plaster casts of sculptures, friezes and tombs. One of these is dominated by a full-scale replica of Trajan's column, cut in half to fit under the ceiling. The other includes reproductions of various works of Italian Renaissance sculpture and architecture, including a full-size replica of Michelangelo's David. Replicas of two earlier Davids by Donatello and Verrocchio, are also included, although for conservation reasons the Verrocchio replica is displayed in a glass case. The two courts are divided by corridors on both stories, and the partitions that used to line the upper corridor, the Gilbert Bay's sculpture gallery, were removed in 2004 to allow the courts to be viewed from above.
Topic ceramics and glass This is the largest and most comprehensive ceramics and glass collection in the world, with over 80,000 objects from around the world. Every populated continent is represented. Apart from the many pieces in the primary galleries on the ground floor, much of the top floor is devoted to galleries of ceramics of all periods covered, which include display cases with a representative selection, but also massed visible storage displays of the reserve collection. Well represented in the collection is Meissen porcelain, from the first factory in Europe to discover the Chinese method of making porcelain. Among the finest examples are the Meissen vulture from 1731 and the Mollendorf dinner service, designed in 1762 by Frederick II the Great. Ceramics from the Manufacture Nationale de Sèvres are extensive, especially from the 18th and 19th centuries. The collection of 18th century British porcelain is the largest and finest in the world. Examples from every factory are represented, the collections of Chelsea porcelain and Worcester porcelain being especially fine. All the major 19th century British factories are also represented. A major boost to the collections was the salting bequest made in 1909, which enriched the museum's stock of Chinese and Japanese ceramics. This bequest forms part of the finest collection of East Asian pottery and porcelain in the world, including Kakiman ware. Many famous potters, such as Josiah Wedgwood, William de Morgan and Bernard Leach as well as Minton's and Royal Dalton are represented in the collection. There is an extensive collection of Delftware produced in both Britain and Holland, which includes a circa 1695 flower pyramid over a meter in height. Bernard Palissy has several examples of his work in the collection including dishes, jugs and candlesticks. The largest objects in the collection are a series of elaborately ornamented ceramic stoves from the 16th and 17th centuries, made in Germany and Switzerland. There is an unrivaled collection of Italian maiolica and lusterware from Spain. The collection of Iznik pottery from Turkey is the largest in the world. The glass collection covers 4,000 years of glassmaking, and has over 6,000 items from Africa, Britain, Europe, America and Asia. The earliest glassware on display comes from ancient Egypt and continues through the ancient Roman, medieval, Renaissance covering areas such as Venetian glass and Bohemian glass and more recent periods, including Art Nouveau glass by Louis Comfort Tiffany and Émile Gallet. The Art Deco style is represented by several examples by René Lalique. There are many examples of crystal chandeliers, both English, displayed in the British galleries and foreign for example Venetian, attributed to Giuseppe Briatti, dated C1750 or in the collection. The stained glass collection is possibly the finest in the world, covering the medieval to modern periods, and covering Europe as well as Britain. Several examples of English 16th century heraldic glass is displayed in the British galleries. Many well-known designers of stained glass are represented in the collection including, from the 19th century, Dante Gabriel Rossetti, Edward Byrne Jones and William Morris. There is also an example of Frank Lloyd Wright's work in the collection. 20th century designers include Harry Clark, John Piper, Patrick Raintians, Veronica Wall and Brian Clark. The main gallery was redesigned in 1994. The glass balustrade on the staircase and mezzanine are the work of Danny Lane. The gallery covering contemporary glass opened in 2004 and the sacred silver and stained glass gallery in 2005. In this latter gallery stained glass is displayed alongside silverware starting in the 12th century and continuing to the present. Some of the most outstanding stained glass, dated 1243 to 1248 comes from the Saint Chapel, is displayed along with other examples in the new medieval and renaissance galleries. The important 13th century glass beaker known as the Luck of Eden Hall is also displayed in these galleries. Examples of British stained glass are displayed in the British galleries. One of the most spectacular items in the collection is the chandelier by Dale Chihuly in the rotunda at the museum's main entrance. Topic. Contemporary These galleries are dedicated to temporary exhibits showcasing both trends from recent decades and the latest in design and fashion. Topic. Prints and drawings Prints and drawings from the over 750,000 items in the collection can be seen on request at the print room, the 
Prints and Drawings Study Room. Booking an appointment is necessary. The collection of drawings includes over 10,000 British and 2,000 old master works, including works by Dura, Giovanni Benedetto Castiglioni, Bernardo Buontalenti, Rembrandt, Antonio Verrio, Paul Sandby, John Russell, Angelica Kaufman, John Flaxman, Hugh Douglas Hamilton, Thomas Rowlandson, William Kilburn, Thomas Girtin, Jean Auguste Dominique Angra, David Wilkie, John Martin, Samuel Palmer, Sir Edwin Henry Landseer, Lord Frederick Layton, Sir Samuel Luke Fields, and Aubrey. Beardsley. Modern British artists represented in the collection include Paul Nash, Percy Wyndham Lewis, Eric Gill, Stanley Spencer, John Piper, Robert Prisman, Graham Sutherland, Lucian Freud, and David Hockney. The print collection has more than 500,000 items, covering posters, greetings cards, book plates, as well as a comprehensive collection of old master prints from the Renaissance to the present, including works by Rembrandt, William Hogarth, Giovanni Battista Piranesi, Canaletto, Carl Friedrich Schinkel, Henry Matisse, and Sir William Nicholson. Topic fashion The costume collection is the most comprehensive in Britain, containing over 14,000 outfits plus accessories, mainly dating from 1600 to the present. Costume sketches, design notebooks, and other works on paper are typically held by the word and image department. Because everyday clothing from previous eras has not generally survived, the collection is dominated by fashionable clothes made for special occasions. One of the first significant gifts of costume came in 1913 when the V&A received the Talbot Hughes collection containing 1,442 costumes and items as a gift from Harrods following its display at the nearby department store. Some of the oldest items in the collection are medieval vestments, especially Opus Anglicanum. One of the most important items in the collection is the wedding suit of James II of England, which is displayed in the British galleries. In 1971, Cecil Beaton curated an exhibition of 1,220th century high fashion garments and accessories, including gowns worn by leading socialites such as Patricia Lopez Wilshaw, Gloria Guinness, and Lee Radziwill, and actresses such as Audrey Hepburn and Ruth Ford. After the exhibition, Beaton donated most of the exhibits to the museum in the names of their former owners. In 1999, V&A began a series of live catwalk events at the museum titled Fashion in Motion featuring items from historically significant fashion collections. The first show featured Alexander McQueen in June 1999. Since then, the museum has hosted recreations of various designer shows every year including Anna Sui, Tristan Weber, Elspeth Gibson, Chungi Lee, Jean-Paul Gaultier, Missoni, Gianfranco Ferre, Christian Lacroix, Kenzo and Kanzai Yamamoto amongst others. In 2002, the museum acquired the cost of collection of 178 Vivian Westwood costumes. Other famous designers with work in the collection include Coco Chanel, Hubert de Givenchy, Christian Dior, Cristobal Balenciaga, Yves Saint Laurent, Guy Laroche, Irene Galitzine, Mila Sean, Valentino Garavani, Norman Norrell, Norman Hartnell, Zandra Rhodes, Hardy Amies, Mary Quant, Christian Lacroix, Jean Muir and Pierre Cardin. The museum continues to acquire examples of modern fashion to add to the collection. The V&A runs an ongoing textile and dress conservation program. For example, in 2008 an important but heavily soiled, distorted and water-damaged 1954 Dior outfit called Zamir was restored to displayable condition for the Golden Age of Couture exhibition. V&A Museum has a large collection of shoes around 2.000 pairs from different cultures around the world. The collection shows the chronological progression of shoe height, heel shape and materials, exposing just how many styles we consider to be modern have been in and out of fashion across the centuries. Topic. Furniture In November 2012, the museum opened its first gallery to be exclusively dedicated to furniture. Prior to this date furniture had been exhibited as part of a greater period context, rather than in isolation to showcase its design and construction merits. Among the designers showcased in the new gallery are Ron Arad, John Henry Belter, Joe Colombo, Eileen Gray, Werner Panton, Thonit, and Frank Lloyd Wright. The furniture collection, while covering Europe and America from the Middle Ages to the present, is predominantly British, dating between 1700 and 1900. 
Many of the finest examples are displayed in the British galleries, including pieces by Chippendale, Adam, Morris, and Mackintosh. One of the oldest items is a chair leg from Middle Egypt dated to 200-395 AD. The furniture and woodwork collection also includes complete rooms, musical instruments, and clocks. Among the rooms owned by the museum are the boudoir of Madame de Chevalier, Paris, 1781-82, by Claude Nicolas Ledoux, with painted paneling by Jean Simeon Rousseau de la Rotière, and Frank Lloyd Wright's Kaufman office, designed and constructed between 1934 and 1937 for the owner of a Pittsburgh department store. The collection includes pieces by William Kent, Henry Flitcroft, Matthias Locke, James Stewart, William Chambers, John Gillow, James Wyatt, Thomas Hopper, Charles Heathcote. Tatham, Pugin, William Burgess, Charles Voisey, Charles Robert Ashby, Bailey Scott, Edwin Lutyens, Edward Morph, Wells Coates and Robin Day. The museum also hosts the National Collection of Wallpaper, which is looked after by the Prince, Drawings and Paintings Department. The Solages collection of Italian and French Renaissance objects was acquired between 1859 and 1865, and includes several cassone. The John Jones collection of French 18th century art and furnishings was left to the museum in 1882, then valued at £250,000. One of the most important pieces in this collection is a marquetry commode by the Abainster Jean Henry Reasoner dated C1780. Other signed pieces of furniture in the collection include a bureau by Jean-François Aubin, a pair of pedestals with inlaid brasswork by André Charles Bull, a commode by Bernard Van Rysenborough and a work table by Martin Carlin. Other 18th-century Abainistes represented in the museum collection include Adam Weisweiler, David Röntgen, Gilles Joubert and Pierre Longuois. In 1901, Sir George Donaldson donated several pieces of Art Nouveau furniture to the museum, which he had acquired the previous year at the Paris Exposition Universelle. This was criticized at the time, with the result that the museum ceased to collect contemporary items and did not do so again until the 1960s. In 1986 the Lady Abingdon collection of French Empire furniture was bequeathed by Mrs. T. R. P. Hole. There are a set of beautiful inlaid doors, dated 1580 from Antwerp City Hall, attributed to Hans Redeemon de Vries. One of the finest pieces of continental furniture in the collection is the Rococo Augustus Rex Bureau Cabinet dated C1750 from Germany, with especially fine marquetry and ormolu mounts. One of the grandest pieces of 19th-century furniture is the highly elaborate French cabinet dated 1861-1867 made by M. Fordinois, made from ebony and laid with box, lime, holly, pear, walnut and mahogany woods as well as marble with gilded carvings. Furniture designed by Ernest Gimson, Edward William Godwin, Charles Voisey, Adolf Luz and Otto Wagner are among the late 19th-century and early 20th-century examples in the collection. The work of modernists in the collection include Le Corbusier, Marcel Brewer, Charles and Ray Eames, and Joe Ponty. One of the oldest clocks in the collection is an astronomical clock of 1588 by Francis Norvay. One of the largest is James Marquick the Younger's Longcase Clock of 1725, nearly 3 meters in height and japanned. Other clockmakers with work in the collection include Thomas Tompion, Benjamin Louis Vulliamy, John Ellicott, and William Carpenter. Topic: <inaudible> Jewelry. <inaudible> the jewelry collection, containing over 6,000 items, is one of the finest and most comprehensive collections of jewelry in the world and includes works dating from ancient Egypt to the present day, as well as jewelry designs on paper. The museum owns pieces by renowned jewelers Cartier, Jean Schlumberger, Peter Carl Faberger, Andrew Griemer, Hemily and Lalique. Other items in the collection include diamond dress ornaments made for Catherine the Great, bracelet clasps once belonging to Marie Antoinette, and the Bohannes emerald necklace presented by Napoleon to his adopted daughter Hortense de Bohannes in 1806. The museum also collects international modern jewelry by designers such as Jays Backer, Ono Bokhout, Peter Chang, Gerda Flockinger, Lucy Sarniel, Dorothea Pruhl and Wendy Ramshaw, and African and Asian traditional jewelry. 
Major bequests include Reverend Chauncey Hare Townsend's collection of 154 gems bequeathed in 1869, Lady Corey's 1951 gift of major diamond jewellery from the 18th and 19th centuries, and jewellery scholar Dame Joan Evans' 1977 gift of more than 800 jewels dating from the Middle Ages to the early 19th century. A new jewellery gallery, funded by William and Judith Bollinger, opened on 24 May 2008. Topic metalwork This collection of more than 45,000 items covers decorative ironwork, both wrought and cast, bronze, silverware, arms and armor, pewter, brassware and enamels, including many examples Limoges enamel. The main ironwork gallery was redesigned in 1995. There are over 10,000 objects made from silver or gold in the collection. The display, about 15% of the collection, is divided into secular and sacred covering both Christian, Roman Catholic, Anglican and Greek Orthodox, and Jewish liturgical vessels and items. The main silver gallery is divided into these areas, British silver pre-1800, British silver 1800-1900, modernist to contemporary silver, European silver. The collection includes the earliest known piece of English silver with a dated hallmark, a silver gilt beaker dated 1496 to 1497. Silversmiths whose work is represented in the collection include Paul de Lamery and Paul Storr whose Castlereagh inkstand dated 1817 to 1819 is one of his finest works. The main iron work gallery covers European wrought and cast iron from the medieval period to the early 20th century. The master of wrought ironwork Jean Tijoux is represented by both examples of his work and designs on paper. One of the largest items is the Hereford screen, weighing nearly 8 tons, 10.5 meters high and 11 meters wide, designed by Sir George Gilbert Scott in 1862 for the chancel in Hereford Cathedral, from which it was removed in 1967. It was made by Skidmore and Company. Its structure of timber and cast iron is embellished with wrought iron, burnished brass and copper. Much of the copper and ironwork is painted in a wide range of colors. The arches and columns are decorated with polished quartz and panels of mosaic. One of the rarest items in the collection is the 58 cm high Gloucester candlestick, dated to C1110, made from gilt bronze, with highly elaborate and intricate intertwining branches containing small figures and inscriptions, it is a tour de force of bronze casting. Also of importance is the Beckett casket dated C1180 to contain relics of St. Thomas Beckett, made from gilt copper, with enameled scenes of the saint's martyrdom. Another highlight is the 1351 Reichenau crozier. The Burley Neff, a salt cellar, French, dated 1527 to 1528, uses a nautilus shell to form the hull of a vessel, which rests on the tail of a parcelgit mermaid, who rests on a hexagonal gilt plinth on six claw and ball feet. Both masts have main and top sails, and battlemented fighting tops are made from gold. These items are displayed in the new medieval and renaissance galleries. Topic musical instruments Musical instruments are classified as furniture by the museum, although Asian instruments are held by their relevant departments. Among the more important instruments owned by the museum are a violin by Antonio Stradivari dated 1699, an oboe that belonged to Gioacchino Rossini, and a jeweled spinet dated 1571 made by Annibal Rossi. The collection also includes a C. 1570 virginal said to have belonged to Elizabeth I, and late 19th century pianos designed by Edward Byrne Jones, and Bailey Scott. The Musical Instruments Gallery closed 25 February 2010, a decision which was highly controversial. An online petition of over 5,100 names on the parliamentary website led to Chris Smith asking Parliament about the future of the collection. The answer, from Brian Davies was that the museum intended to preserve and care for the collection and keep it available to the public, with items being redistributed to the British galleries, the medieval and renaissance galleries, and the planned new galleries for furniture and Europe 1600-1800, and that the Horniman Museum and other institutions were possible candidates for loans of material to ensure that the instruments remained publicly viewable. The Horniman went on to host a joint exhibition with the V&A of Musical Instruments, and has the loan of 35 instruments from the museum. Topic. Paintings and miniatures 
The collection includes about 1130 British and 650 European oil paintings, 6,800 British watercolours, pastels and 2,000 miniatures, for which the museum holds the national collection. Also on loan to the museum, from Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II, are the Raphael cartoons, the seven surviving, there were ten, full-scale designs for tapestries in the Sistine Chapel, of the lives of Peter and Paul from the Gospels and the Acts of the Apostles. There is also on display a fresco by Pietro Perugino dated 1522 from the Church of Castello at Fontignano, Perugia, and is amongst the painter's last works. One of the largest objects in the collection is the Spanish tempera on wood, 670 by 486 cm, retable of St. George, c. 1400, consisting of numerous scenes and painted by Andrés Marzal de Saxe in Valencia. 19th century British artists are well represented. John Constable and J. M. W. Turner are represented by oil paintings, watercolors and drawings. One of the most unusual objects on display is Thomas Gainsborough's experimental showbox with its backlit landscapes, which he painted on glass, which allowed them to be changed like slides. Other landscape painters with works on display include Philip James de Lauterberg, Peter de Wint and John Ward. In 1857 John Sheepshanks donated 233 paintings, mainly by contemporary British artists, and a similar number of drawings to the museum with the intention of forming a, a National Gallery of British Art, a role since taken on by Tate Britain. Artists represented are William Blake, James Barry, Henry Fusley, Sir Edwin Henry Landseer, Sir David Wilkie, William Mulready, William Powell Frith, Millet and Hippolyte Delaroche. Although some of Constable's works came to the museum with the Sheepshanks bequest, the majority of the artist's works were donated by his daughter Isabel in 1888, including the large number of sketches in oil, the most significant being the 1821 full-size oil sketch for the Hay Wayne. Other artists with works in the collection include, Bernardino Fungi, Marcus Gerarts the Younger, Domenico di Pace Beccafumi, Fioravante Feramola, Jan Bruegel the Elder, Anthony van Dyck, Ludovico Caracci, Antonio Verrio, Giovanni Battista Tipolo, Domenico Tipolo, Canaletto, Francis Heyman, Pompeo Batoni, Benjamin West, Paul Sandby, Richard Wilson, William Etty, Henry Fusley, Sir Thomas Lawrence, James Barry, Francis Danby, Richard Parks Bonington and Alphonse Legros. Richard Ellison's collection of 100 British watercolours was given by his widow in 1860 and 1873, to promote the foundation of the National Collection of Watercolour Paintings. Over 500 British and European oil paintings, watercolours and miniatures and 3,000 drawings and prints were bequeathed in 1868-1869 by the clergyman Chancy Hare Townsend and Alexander Dice. Several French paintings entered the collection as part of the 260 paintings and miniatures, not all the works were French, for example Carlo Crivelli's Virgin and Child, that formed part of the Jones Bequest of 1882 and as such are displayed in the galleries of Continental Art 1600-1800, including the portrait of François, Duke d'Alencon by François Clouet, Gaspard Duggett and works by François Boucher including his portrait of Madame de Pompadour dated 1758, Jean-François de Troyes, Jean Baptiste Pater and their contemporaries. Another major Victorian benefactor was Constantine Alexander Ionides, who left 82 oil paintings to the museum in 1901, including works by Botticelli, Tintoretto, Adrian Brower, Jean Baptiste Camille Corot, Gustave Corbett, Eugene Delacroix, Theodore Rousseau, Edgar Degas, Jean Francois Millet, Dante Gabriel Rossetti, Edward Byrne Jones, plus watercolours and over a thousand drawings and prints. The Salting Bequest of 1909 included, among other works, watercolors by J. M. W. Turner. Other watercolorists include, William Gilpin, Thomas Rowlandson, William Blake, John Sell Cotman, Paul Sandby, William Mulready, Edward Lear, James Abbott McNeil Whistler and Paul Cezanne. There is a copy of Raphael's The School of Athens over 4 meters by 8 meters in size, dated 1755 by Anton Raphael Mengs on display in the Eastern Cast Court. Miniaturists represented in the collection include Jean Bordichon, Hans Holbein the Younger, Nicholas Hilliard, Isaac Oliver, Peter Oliver, Jean Pettitit, Alexander Cooper, Samuel Cooper, Thomas Flatman, Rosalba Carriera, Christian Friedrich Zinke, George Engelhardt, John Smart, Richard Cosway and William Charles Ross. Topic. 
Topic: Photography. The collection contains more than 500,000 images dating from the advent of photography, the oldest image dating from 1839. The gallery displays a series of changing exhibits and closes between exhibitions to allow full re-display to take place. Already in 1858, when the museum was called the South Kensington Museum, it had the world's first international photographic exhibition. The collection includes the work of many photographers from Fox Talbot, Julia Margaret Cameron, Viscountess Clementina Hardin, Gustave Le Gray, Benjamin Brecknell Turner, Frederick Hollier, Samuel Bourne, Roger Fenton, Man Ray, Henry Cartier Bresson, Ilza Bing, Bill Brandt, Cecil Beaton, there are more than 8,000 of his negatives, Don McCullen, David Bailey, Jim Lee, and Helen Chadwick to the present day. One of the more unusual collections is that of Edward Mybridge's photographs of animal locomotion of 1887, this consists of 781 plates. These sequences of photographs taken a fraction of a second apart capture images of different animals and humans performing various actions. There are several of John Thompson's 1876-7 images of street life in London in the collection. The museum also holds James Lafayette's Society Portraits, a collection of more than 600 photographs dating from the late 19th to early 20th centuries and portraying a wide range of society figures of the period, including bishops, generals, society ladies, Indian maharajas, Ethiopian rulers and other foreign leaders, actresses, people posing in their motor cars and a sequence of photographs recording the guests at the famous fancy dress ball held at Devonshire House in 1897 to celebrate Queen Victoria. Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. In 2003 and 2007 Penelope Smale and Kathleen Moffat generously donated Curtis Moffat's extensive archive to the museum. He created dynamic abstract photographs, innovative color still lives and glamorous society portraits during the 1920s and 1930s. He was also a pivotal figure in modernist interior design. In Paris during the 1920s, Moffat collaborated with Man Ray, producing portraits and abstract photograms or rayographs. Topic sculpture The sculpture collection at the V&A is the most comprehensive holding of post-classical European sculpture in the world. There are approximately 22,000 objects in the collection that cover the period from about 400 AD to 1914. This covers among other periods Byzantine and Anglo-Saxon ivory sculptures, British, French and Spanish medieval statues and carvings, the Renaissance, Baroque, Neoclassical, Victorian and Art Nouveau periods. All uses of sculpture are represented, from tomb and memorial, to portrait, allegorical, religious, mythical, statues for gardens including fountains, as well as architectural decorations. Materials used include, marble, alabaster, stone, terracotta, wood, history of wood carving, ivory, gesso, plaster, bronze, lead and ceramics. The collection of Italian, medieval, Renaissance, Baroque and neoclassical sculpture, both original and in cast form, is unequaled outside of Italy. It includes Canova's The Three Graces, which the museum jointly owns with National Galleries of Scotland. Italian sculptors whose work is held by the museum include, Bartolomeo Bon, Bartolomeo Bellano, Luca della Robbia, Giovanni Pisano, Donatello, Agostino di Duccio, Andrea Riccio, Antonio Rossellino, Andrea del Verrocchio, Antonio Lombardo, Pier Jacopo Alari Bonacolsi, Andrea della Robbia, Michelozzo di Bartolomeo, Michelangelo represented by a freehand wax model and casts of his most famous sculptures, Jacopo Sansovino, Alessandro Algardi, Antonio Calcani, Benvenuto Cellini, Medusa's head dated c. 1547, Agostino Busti, Bartolomeo Amanati, Giacomo della Porta, Giambologna, Samson slaying a Philistine c. 1562, his finest work outside Italy, Benini, Neptune and Triton c. 1622-3, Giovanni Battista Foggini, Vincenzo Foggini, Samson and the Philistines, Massimiliano Soldani Benzi, Antonio Corradini, Andrea Brustolin, Giovanni Giovanni Battista Piranesi, Innocenzo Spinazzi, Canova, Carlo Marochetti and Raphael Monti. An unusual sculpture is the ancient Roman statue of Narcissus restored by Valerio Cioli C1564 with plaster. There are several small-scale bronzes by Donatello, Alessandro Vittoria, Tiziano Aspetti and Francesco Finelli in the collection. 
The largest item from Italy is the chancel chapel from Santa Chiara Florence dated 1493 to 1500, designed by Giuliano da Sangallo it is 11.1 meters in height by 5.4 meters square, it includes a grand sculpted tabernacle by Antonio Rossellino and colored terracotta decoration. Rodin is represented by more than 20 works in the museum collection, making it one of the largest collections of the sculptor's work outside France. These were given to the museum by the sculptor in 1914, as acknowledgement of Britain's support of France in World War I. Although the statue of St. John the Baptist had been purchased in 1902 by public subscription. Other French sculptors with work in the collection are Hubert Le Sueur, François Girardin, Michel Clodion, Jean-Antoine Hoden, Jean-Baptiste Carpo and Jules Dalou. There are also several Renaissance works by Northern European sculptors in the collection including work by, Weiss Doss, Tilman Riemenschneider, Hendrik de Keyser, Jan van Schaeck, Hans Dorcher and Peter Flotner. Baroque works from the same area include the work of Adrian de Vries and Sebastian Slots. The Spanish sculptors with work in the collection include Alonso Berigit and Luisa Roldan represented by her virgin and child with Saint Diego of Alcala c. 1695. Sculptors both British and Europeans who were based in Britain and whose work is in the collection include Nicholas Stone, Keyes Gabriel Sibber, Grinling Gibbons, John Michael Risbrack, Louis-François Rubiliac, Peter Sheemakers, Sir Henry Cheer, Agostino Carlini, Thomas Banks, Joseph Nolikens, Joseph Wilton, John Flaxman, Sir Francis Chantry, John Gibson, Edward Hodges Bailey, Lord Leighton, Alfred Stevens, Thomas Brock, Alfred Gilbert, George Frampton, and Eric Gill. A sample of some of these sculptors' work is on display in the British galleries. With the opening of the Dorothy and Michael Hintz Sculpture Galleries in 2006 it was decided to extend the chronology of the works on display up to 1950. This has involved loans by other museums, including Tate Britain, so works by Henry Moore and Jacob Epstein along with other of their contemporaries are now on view. These galleries concentrate on works dated 1600 to 1950 by British sculptors, works by continental sculptors who worked in Britain, and works bought by British patrons from the continental sculptors, such as Canova's Theseus and the Minotaur. The galleries overlooking the garden are arranged by theme, tomb sculpture, portraiture, garden sculpture and mythology. Then there is a section that covers late 19th century and early 20th century sculpture, this includes work by Rodin and other French sculptors such as Dalou who spent several years in Britain where he taught sculpture. Smaller scale works are displayed in the Gilbert Bays Gallery, covering medieval especially English alabaster sculpture, bronzes, wooden sculptures and has demonstrations of various techniques such as bronze casting using lost wax casting. The majority of the medieval and renaissance sculpture is displayed in the new medieval and renaissance galleries open December 2009. One of the largest objects in the collection is the S. Hertogen Bosch Rood Loft, from the Netherlands, dated 1610 to 1613. This is as much a work of architecture as sculpture, 10.4 meters wide, 7.8 meters high. The architectural framework is of various colored marbles, including columns, arches, and balustrade, against which are statues and bas reliefs and other carvings in alabaster, the work of sculptor Conrad van Nornbeck. Topic textiles The collection of textiles consists of more than 53,000 examples, mainly Western European though all populated continents are represented, dating from the 1st century AD to the present, this is the largest such collection in the world. Techniques represented include weaving, printing, quilting embroidery, lace, tapestry and carpets. These are classified by technique, countries of origin and date of production. The collections are well represented in these areas, early silks from the Near East, lace, European tapestries and English medieval church embroidery. The tapestry collection includes a fragment of the cloth of St. Gerion, the oldest known surviving European tapestry. A highlight of the collection is the four Devonshire hunting tapestries, very rare 15th century tapestries, woven in the Netherlands, depicting the hunting of various animals, not just their age but their size make these unique. Both of the major English centres of tapestry weaving of the 16th and 17th centuries respectively, Sheldon and Mortlake are represented in the collection by several examples. Also included are tapestries from John van der Bank's workshop which was the leading English tapestry manufactory in the late 17th century and early 18th century. 
Some of the finest tapestries are examples from the Gobelins workshop, including a set of Jason and the Argonauts dating from the 1750s. Other continental centers of tapestry weaving with work in the collection include Brussels, Tournai, Beauvais, Strasbourg and Florence. One of the earliest surviving examples of European quilting, the late 14th century Sicilian Tristan quilt, is also held by the collection. The collection has numerous examples of various types of textiles designed by William Morris, including, embroidery, woven fabrics, tapestries including the forest tapestry of 1887, rugs and carpets, as well as pattern books and paper designs. The Art Deco period is covered by rugs and fabrics designed by Marion Dawn. From the same period there is a rug designed by Serge Chermayev. The collection also includes the Oxborough hangings, which were made by Mary, Queen of Scots and Bess of Hardwick. However, the Oxborough hangings are on permanent long-term loan at Oxborough Hall. Topic theatre and performance The V&A holds the national collection of performing arts in the UK, including drama, dance, opera, circus, puppetry, comedy, musical theatre, costume, set design, pantomime, popular music and other forms of live entertainment. The theatre and performance collections were founded in the 1920s when private collector, Gabrielle Entoven, donated her collection of theatrical memorabilia to the V&A. In 1974 two further independent collections were compiled to form a comprehensive performing arts collection at the V&A. The collections were displayed at the Theatre Museum, which operated from Covent Garden until closing in 2007. Theatre and performance galleries opened at South Kensington in March 2009 tracing the production process of performance and include a temporary exhibition space. Types of items displayed include costumes, set models, wigs, prompt books, and posters. The department holds significant archives documenting current practice and the history of performing arts. These include the English Stage Company at the Royal Court Theatre, Doily Cart and the Design Collection of the Arts Council. Notable personal archives include Vivian Lee, Peter Brook, Henry Irving and Ivan Novello. Rock and pop are well represented with the Glastonbury Festival Archive, Harry Hammond Photographic Collection and Jamie Reed Archive Documenting Punk. Costumes include those worn by John Lennon, Mick Jagger, Elton John, Adam Ant, Chris Martin, Iggy Pop, Prince, Shirley Bassey and the stage outfit worn by Roger Daltrey at Woodstock. Topic. Departments Topic. Education The Education Department has wide-ranging responsibilities. It provides information for the casual visitor as well as for school groups, including integrating learning in the museum with the national curriculum. It provides research facilities for students at degree level and beyond, with information and access to the collections. It also oversees the content of the museum's website in addition to publishing books and papers on the collections, research and other aspects of the museum. Several areas of the collection have dedicated study rooms, these allow access to items in the collection that are not currently on display, but in some cases require an appointment to be made. The new Sackler Education Suite, occupying the two lower floors of the Henry Cole Wing opened in September 2008. This includes lecture rooms and areas for use by schools, which will be available during school holidays for use by families, and will enable direct handling of items from the collection. Topic v a Publishing v a Publishing within the Education Department work to raise funds for the museum by publishing around 30 books and digital items each year. The company have around 180 books in print. Topic. Activities for children Activity backpacks are available for children. These are free to borrow and include hands-on activities such as puzzles, construction games and stories related to themes of the museum. Topic. Activities for adults The Learning Academy offers adult courses as well as training for professionals in the culture and heritage sector, both nationally and internationally. 
We also have great facilities in which to teach, study and get closer to our collections. Learning activity Topic research and conservation Research is a very important area of the museum's work, and includes, identification and interpretation of individual objects, other studies contribute to systematic research, this develops the public understanding of the art and artifacts of many of the great cultures of the world, visitor research and evaluation to discover the needs of visitors and their experiences of the museum. Since 1990 the museum has published research reports these focus on all areas of the collections. Conservation is responsible for the long-term preservation of the collections, and covers all the collections held by the V&A and the V&A Museum of Childhood. The conservators specialize in particular areas of conservation. Areas covered by conservators' work include preventive conservation This includes, performing surveys, assessments and providing advice on the handling of items, correct packaging, mounting and handling procedures during movement and display to reduce risk of damaging objects. Activities include controlling the museum environment, for example, temperature and light, and preventing pests, primarily insects, from damaging artifacts. The other major category is, interventive conservation, this includes, cleaning and reintegration to strengthen fragile objects, reveal original surface decoration, and restore shape. Interventive treatment makes an object more stable, but also more attractive and comprehensible to the viewer. It is usually undertaken on items that are to go on public display. Topic exhibitions The V&A has large galleries devoted to temporary exhibitions. A typical year will see more than a dozen different exhibitions being staged, covering all areas of the collections. Notable exhibitions of recent years have been, Britain Can Make It, 1946 Hats, an anthology, 2009 Power of Making, 2011 The V&A came second in London's top paid exhibitions in 2015 with the record-breaking Alexander McQueen show, 3,472 a day. Topic. Galleries General views Museum Galleries Asia British Galleries Metalwork Paintings English paintings French paintings Italian paintings Sculptures Gothic art Topic see also List of most visited art museums Director of the Victoria and Albert Museum Philippa Glanville V&A Digital Futures Events on Digital Art